Hi, my name is Michael Crump, and I'm a PhD candidate in material science and engineering at the University of Washington, working for Professor Devin McKenzie. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to spin coating, which is a deposition technique used to fabricate thin films reproducibly, and we're also going to spin coat a perovskite layer, which is the photoactive layer used in perovskite solar cells. This spin coater is located inside of a nitrogen glove box. Before using the spin coater, we must confirm that the glove box is ready to be used. First, let's confirm there is sufficient nitrogen pressure, the oxygen water levels are below 0.1 ppm, and the thermal evaporator is under vacuum. If the glove box passes inspection, then the circulation purifier is turned off. The circulation purifier cycles the glove box atmosphere through a copper catalyst to remove trace amounts of water and oxygen. The catalyst should not be exposed to solvent vapors evolved while spin coating. Upon completing the inspection, we'll activate the tool in Coral to boot up the spin coater computer, where we'll define our spin coating recipe. To create a new spin coating recipe, press the mixing board icon followed by the train icon. The spin coating recipe is broken into individual segments. The first segment is used to define the acceleration of the spin coater, while all subsequent segments have a defined speed and duration. Once the spin coater is programmed, we can save the parameters by pressing the no cards icon, creating a new file name and recipe, and pressing the save button. After defining and saving the recipe, we press the door icon until we return to the main screen, and then switch to automatic mode to run the recipe. From here, the spin coater can be controlled from inside the glove box. Now that the spin coater recipe is defined, we'll place our hands in the glove box and put on disposable gloves to protect the butyl glove box gloves from solvents. To begin spin coating onto glass ITO substrates, we'll open the lid, place the substrate on the chuck, and press the round VAC button to turn on the vacuum. Then, we'll blow off any dust from the substrate with the nitrogen gun, close the lid, and perform a dry run by pressing the round start-stop button. The purpose of a dry run is to confirm that all spin coating parameters are correct. After completing the dry run, we'll begin spin coating perovskite films. First, we'll place a glass ITO substrate onto the chuck, turn on the vacuum, and then adjust the volume of the pipetter as needed. Then, we'll withdraw yellow perovskite precursor solution from a glass vial and deposit the solution carefully onto the substrate, ensuring to cover the entire substrate with solution. Then, we'll close the lid and start spin coating. The yellow solution will change to a brown color as solvent evaporates, and a significant amount of precursor will fly off the film. However, a uniform film will form. Once the spin coater stops, the sample will be transferred to a hot plate and annealed to drive off the remaining solvent. You can see the film has changed color.
to finish fabrication, we need to expose the ITO electrode to ensure that complete electrical contact can be made to the solar cell. While gripping the sample with forceps, we use a razor to physically etch away a stripe of perovskite to expose the ITO electrode. Thank you for watching this CEI sponsored video of spin coating and its application to solar cell fabrication. Please check out our other videos showing thermal evaporation and solar cell characterization.